Well, I guess it's only a matter of time before I make a video uh, in response to something. So let's um, talk about the Surface Duo and other phones out there that uh, pretty much get slammed by websites telling you directly not to buy them. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. So today, uh, well, actually yesterday, I was scrolling through my feed, uh, my Google feed, and, you know, certain websites pop up more than others. And sometimes I'll read, sometimes I'll, I don't. But uh, the funny thing is I saw, now I've actually told, I don't know if I've directly told people not to buy something. Um, I always get asked, is it worth it? Uh, and you know, I try to avoid answering that directly because in order to find out if something is worth something, uh, you have to actually use it yourself. You can't go on what someone else is saying. So obviously right now, the hot topic of them all is the Surface Duo. The Surface Duo is a device that's getting treated just like the Essential phone. And there's other phones that have gotten treated this way, but the Surface Duo is like the main shooter right now. People are falling in love with this phone just because of the price or they're realizing, whoa, you know, it's actually a good phone now that it's updated uh, and the price just helps. Uh, you have your own reasoning for buying the, the device. I will hope that you just wouldn't buy it just solely because of the price uh, and just kind of force yourself to like it because someone else is telling you it's good. Now, I, I'm a, I was an early adapter to the Surface Duo. You know, I started talking about and addressing the Surface Duo back in 2019, like many other people who are in tech. Um, but that's what this video is about, the, the techie versus the regular consumer. Uh, and the problem that I have with some tech websites is that they directly tell people not to buy something instead of, you know, pretty much giving them an option to decide because there are people out there who actually are most of the world is probably a lot of the world now is shifting towards the more expensive phone because they can put it on their cell phone bill. But guaranteed, a lot of these people would not purchase these phones if they couldn't finance them on their bill. If they had to pay outright a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks, two thousand bucks, five hundred bucks, some people just would not do it. A phone is not that important to them. Uh, it's, it's an essential part of their lives. Uh, they like that they can take photos. They like that they could do these things with it and take pictures of their family, send it out on social media. They love these things. But when it boils down to it, based on the people I talk to, they're like, I'm not spending that much money on a phone. What do I need that much for on a smartphone for? It's not even, you know, I'm not going to get that much use out of it. So I saw a website post, uh, and I'm not going to give this website any glory, uh, just for sure not here on this channel. Uh, I personally don't like the way they write over there. Uh, I used to rock with them a lot, but they pretty much just, slam everything you know and i think the the problem with some tech sites like this uh is they they create the narrative and if you're not strong enough mentally to think for yourself you're gonna fall for this nonsense so pretty much i just pretty much read that um and and when i see a post when i see a so-called editor or writer writing words like i pissed off the fanboys in in my last t uh, article on this <laughs> I, I immediately right there it looks like a childish post um, and it looks like it fits the bill of, of that website. Um, I, I just don't think it's smart for you guys to follow um, or be influenced by these types of influencers. Uh, if you ever want to experience something and a person is solely telling you about it's going to get a software update, it, you know, it, it, it doesn't get software updates or uh, it doesn't have this. Or they talk about all the techie side of this thing, of this device and never give you any real use scenario, those are the people that you should genuinely avoid. You want to try to focus your energy when you're buying something, because I'm not naive to the fact that I know people shop by looking at Amazon and looking at YouTube, or they go to all these different YouTube sites, to, or they, they just pretty much go to YouTube in most situations and look for a video product on the product that they're wanting to purchase, uh, and then they buy it after the fact, or they say, ooh, I probably shouldn't get it. So. And I know this because people make these comments directly in my videos and other people's videos. I'll see people type out, I'm so glad you confirmed I made a good choice. I'm like, mm, you, you might not get the same experience that I got. One of the top comments that I see is, wow, man, I'm so glad uh, I watched this video first. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I just bought it based on your video. Uh, you know, though, that is a huge pill to swallow. 
knowing that someone is going to go out and swipe their car for six hundred dollars, thinking that what you said is going to be a confirmation for their experience. That's a tough pill to swallow. But unfortunately, in today's world, that happens a lot. And I'm not saying that I don't appreciate or we as creators don't appreciate that feedback because we gave you some sense of idea of what you could possibly get as an experience like we did. But I think consumers, if they're buying some of the devices that are a little bit more expensive, they're probably going to get a better experience than we get because we tend to tear them down like the products. We rip them apart for every little thing. And we kind of focus mainly on the techie side. Uh, but I saw that, that post about flat out telling you don't even buy it if it's four hundred dollars. And I thought this is a horrible post because in that post, there's no real substance. Uh, it's just a bunch of emotion. And when you talk with emotion, you weed out any kind of sensibility in most situations that you could possibly make. So is a Surface Duo a device that is going to be beneficial to a lot of people? Absolutely, because you get the ability to have a tablet and phone-like uh, capabilities. Uh, and there's so much, let's, let's just go straight direct to it. I've said it in my own videos. The only downfall that this device had was software. It wasn't tweaked good enough. It wasn't stable enough. They are producing software updates now to fix that. And in this post, they just ramble on about, uh, yeah, it's been nine months and they still haven't fixed it. Well, it seems like there's like this personal vendetta with that site, I guess. I don't know. I didn't see their other post on it. I haven't. I don't even read this site anymore because of things like this. You know, with all that emotion behind when you should just keep a either you're going to do actually review the tech or you're going to do infomercials. And I think. Again, you're going to have to decide what you consider an influencer and a tech reviewer. That's a topic that plenty of us have covered. Um, and it's just going to be one that you have to make the final choice when you're looking at someone or you're watching someone. Um, and you know, let's be fair here. A lot of these sites, they don't care about, you know, you as a, a, a viewer. They don't really care um, because it shows in their actions, uh, not just this one site, but lots of sites out there when they're when they post things like this to kind of piss off their readers or try to get under their skin or try to draw attention to themselves i would say just avoid just avoid you know sites like that that are going to tell you directly don't buy this because it has a snapdragon 855 and it has, only has six gigs of ram there is definitely a lot of people using the surface duo and have been since day one, there's plenty of people out there that have said, you know, hey, man, I use this thing since day one and I, I was with it through the growth. I personally used it for, I think, about two and a half months or so. And then I sold it and I grabbed it back um, when the price dropped uh, a, a couple months back or whatever, whenever it dropped. But um, this is just my take on when you see people and you see websites telling you to just flat out avoid something. Now, if it's a scam, then of course, but it sounds like this read that I did on this particular website, it pretty much, it was just a bunch of anger is what it looked like. And it's not very professional if that's where you're gonna present yourself online, but this is a well-known site. And you know, hopefully they got what they wanted out of that site, uh, out, out of that post, but um, it definitely draws traffic and it draws conversation. But I, I was going to comment, but I didn't see that comments were turned on and, you know, things like that. You know, I don't know if any if they're telling people to avoid the phone, I would say just avoid their site because that's the type of writing that you're going to get. Uh, and this is what you're going to get from them. And this is pretty much how they've always been. I've seen so many lopsided reviews over there, if you want to call them a review um, opinions uh, over there. Yes, we do want companies or websites or techies to critique the products um we want them to critique the products but not to the point where you're just flat out writing off something because you're mad that it's not the way you want it because now that the surface duo software has gotten worlds better there's a reason why they're okay yes they are selling it to get rid of the current models yeah, they're selling them to get rid of the current models, at least most of them to make some money, but they're still going to have to warranty these. They're going to have to have some on backhaul just to warranty, repair. You know, it has to be there. Replace. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, um, 
telling a, 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 a person or telling people when you have the voice and the platform to just you need to flat out stay away from this. It's just garbage. It's horrible. Uh, you know, it only has specs from three years ago. I, I found that to be just a silly read altogether. And yeah, I'm not making this video to pretty much bash this site. I just found it uh, shocking and appalling that you're bold enough to just tell people stay away from this place. You know, even at four hundred dollars, don't buy it. It's trash when it's just not true. We can say that about a ton. OK, let me say this. We can say that about Android and iOS, oh, iOS phones versus Android phones. We could tell everybody if you're into updates and all this stuff, don't buy any Android phones. Couldn't we? Because we've got iPhones from seven, eight years ago that are getting updates. If we want to be direct, you know, and I, I prefer Android over iOS. But if you want to be that direct, just tell people don't buy Android phones because most Android phones are dated as soon. Almost all Android phones lose value as soon as you buy them. You turn around and try to resell them, they're gone. So if we want to play that game, then yeah, we could do that. But if you're living in the real world, you know that there's a phone for everyone. There's a device for everyone. I think you have to be a little bit more open minded if you're going to say you're a tech reviewer or you're going to have this big popular website uh, and then you're going to write these silly posts every now and then uh, about just straight up just saying something that's outlandish. Don't buy this even for four hundred dollars. It's not worth it. It has specs from three years ago and all this other nonsense. And let's be clear, I am totally not defending the Surface Duo because, as I said, this happened to the Essential phone. Everybody trashed the Essential phone. Price dropped. Essential updated that phone for two years and everybody loved it. Most people love that phone. Some people still use it today. Today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> today. Uh, yeah, but. Telling a person or telling the readers, you know, the good thing about this is there's a lot of non-tech people out there who don't even know what this site is. They don't even know who this, these people are, which is good because I think that's sending out poor information to your readers and having like a little hissy fit or, you know, just a little temper tantrum because you're so mad like that this phone is people are actually interested in this phone. Yes, it is not up to your standards. OK, we get it. Everybody has their own opinion, but you, you can't just. You can. I don't think it's wise to just flat out. And some would argue, well, they're keeping it real. They're telling the readers the truth. Most people are only buying this phone because it's low in price. It's not even good. Every phone, every device is going to have some issues. Every device. My M1 Mac has rebooted on me before and crashed. Um, my most powerful devices have rebooted and crashed. Now, while it's not regular, Every device, if it's man-made, is going to fail at some point or another. And the fact that people think that um, Microsoft didn't really get behind this the right way, I agree. I've said it myself. I agree. I, I think they did a horrible job by hyping us up and then giving us this weak launch with this bad software. But the fact is, they've improved the software. And so what? It's not on Android 11. So what? That's that's how I feel about it. So what? What are you going to get once you get to Android 11? You're just going to be able to say, I'm on Android 11. And for the people that always say, oh, no, no, no. It improved this. It, it made this world's better. I don't think you really see too many jumps on some devices. You're told not to update to the next version because it's just not going to be stable enough. Have you ever thought that for one second, just come in close. Have you ever thought for one second that they've already tested Android 11 and it's just not stable because they have six gigs of RAM and that software is so strong on our heavy. It's just not working well. What if they decide, you know what? We better skip to Android 12. No one knows what's going to happen. So as a creator to other creators, uh, uh, websites and all these other places that post these direct statements like this saying something is not some things just aren't good but they're just not good for you. There is absolutely a phone that has been made that er at least one or two hundred people have bought it. Whether they liked it or not in the end and they're still using it, we don't know. But I personally don't like when I see sites just flat out telling consumers, uh, avoid this. This is why in, in, in part six and five, I believe, 
uh, of the series of how to start a YouTube channel, tips and tricks or tips and things that support your channel. I think this is why I said, you know, you want to avoid that person who's just straight up tech head. You want to go talk to some regular people who are going to not be so involved in the specs. You you cannot give an honest opinion, a review as a, as a, I just feel like regular people like search YouTube for a product from your favorite tech reviewer. Now go search YouTube for your product that and don't tag that tech reviewer's name in the search and try to find regular people using it, getting regular opinions and daily use. You will find a lot of people using the surface that are not technology fiends. They're not create content creators regularly. They're just regular people. There are a ton of people out there and some of them actually have a channel. Now it might not be as popular as some of the other people that you like, but they're, they're quote unquote regular people. This is their only phone. Uh, this is their, this is the devices they're using as a phone, uh, their, their tablet, all these different th scenarios that they can think of. That's where you're going to get honest, real feedback because not every creator is actually using the products. Uh, and you know, I guess main SIM, that's a thing now because most of us have more than one SIM card, more than one phone line, but most creators are not um, genuinely using these products. They're just using it for a, a week or uh, three days and they're, they're throwing it out the window at that point. Because I bet you these people that are on this post trashing the, the Surface Duo, they use it for a little bit and put it aside and went back to their iPhone or went back to whatever phone they're using. I'm, I'm pretty much... 100% positive, uh, at least th my opinion is, they, they not use, they're not using this phone. They didn't even use it for two or three months more than likely. So, um, yeah, if you can avoid uh, and be on the, be mindful of what you're watching, uh, and, and, and disclaimer, I'm not saying I'm right in anything I'm saying. I'm just giving my opinion on what I read, but I thought it's kind of an unfair analogy of a device, such if you're not using it regularly. You're just some person cheerleader on the sidelines cheering. For some reason, some phones get hyped up and they are not for the create for the user. They're not for the user. They're just about a money grab or I'm getting paid to promote this product or, you know, I just want to promote this product because I got some benefits of getting another one next year. Some sites are like that. You know what I'm saying? They they pretty much just promote whatever they can get a financial gain from and they trash things that they cannot get a financial gain from. Sometimes it's like that. I'm not saying all sites are like that, but I'm also telling you that I'm not saying I'm right. And what I'm saying is a fact. I'm just continuously trying to make you aware that there are sometimes those false prophets out there. You have to avoid them. You've got to learn to differentiate what you think a real review is or a real content creator is or a real website that's giving you information that's beneficial to you. And we don't I'm not saying you want people to only tell you good things. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying one of the top questions I get is, should I buy this? Is it worth it? And most of my response is always, you're going to have to just get out there. I can tell you how good it is. It's working for me, but you need to get out there and buy it yourself. You can't rely on someone else to tell you something is great because you might get a completely different experience. Fair? Okay. So I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. It's not so solely just about the Surface Duo in the end, I guess. This is any product. You'll have uh, companies and, and websites out there telling you to just avoid them because they don't like the specs on it. It's, it's something from four years ago. So many people. But you know what's weird? I hardly ever see people doing this with an iPhone. They're praising Apple just because it's getting software updates. It's got old, ancient hardware. Cameras aren't that great. I mean, the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6 However far back the updates are going to go right now, I'm, I've yet to really see anybody say, oh, you know, don't, don't buy, it may be getting software updates, but don't buy that. That hardware is really outdated. You come out better by buying this. I, I hardly ever see that. Pretty much gets praised all the time. But nonetheless, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. Uh, we will talk more uh, coming up soon. I got I got something I want to talk about live with you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.